We've heard the name Zivu Arath for years. Just like Sabathun, who played many tricks and finally made her debut in Witch Queen, we for sure are going to encounter her sister either in Lightfall at Seasons or the Final Shape. This Hive God of War is one of the top disciples among the Witnesses' command, and is making her presence known in full force this season. Today we are going to discuss Zivu Arath, how her magic powers differ from her siblings, and what madness we may see when she finally arrives. Zivu Arath, or Arath as pronounced by some characters, has her own personality like her siblings, and Bungie is portraying this in interesting ways. Let's first take a look at how she acts and some of the things she's done in the past. In the Books of Sorrow, Zero, the young Zivu, learns what she must do when the siblings take the worms in. You must obey your nature forever. In your immortality, Arash, you may never cease to explore and inquire for the sake of your children. In your immortality, Zero, you may never cease to test your strength. In your immortality, Sathona, you may never abandon cunning. If you do, your worm will consume you. And as your power grows, O oh princes, so will your worm's appetite. So Zero described as in your immortality, you may never cease to test your strength. You're all about strength. The three siblings would then go on to kill each other many times and different species for years. This is the way they showed their love to each other. Oryx and Savathun established their own courts, but Zivu had a different idea. At last, the many moons came to many worlds, and it was time to go to war on life. Oryx said, I shall establish a court, and whoever comes into this court may challenge me. My court will be the High War. It will be a killing ground and a school of the sword logic we have learned from our gods. Savathun thought this was a great idea. She made a court called the High Coven. Zivu Arath said, The world is my court, wherever there is war. So Zivu clearly likes war and is often referred to as the Hive God of War. A time later, the siblings split. Sabathun flew into a black hole, Oryx does whatever he does, and Zivu leaves with her fleet. Saith Zivu Arath, King Oryx, you take up too much space. Your power constrains too many choices. I must go away from you. She flies her war moons away into the night. Her throne is barred shut. In Book Empress, Chapter 5, New Gods, we see Zivu Arath appear. She did have some forces messing around in the Dreaming City during the Forsaken events, but she would invade full out on Tor Battle soon after this. This is the Cabal homeworld, and they destroyed almost if not everything. It turns out here, Savathun played a trick, and one of Kaido's generals was corrupted into following her sister Zivu. Once Kaido killed the general, this summoned Zivu and her forces to their planet. As the chattering reached a fevered pitch, Kaido made a decision. With the lightning-quick reflexes Umun had taught her, she unsheathed the ceremonial sword at her side and ran it through Umun's middle. Umun laughed, You are war, and I conjure you with war and blood. She laughed and laughed and laughed until her mouth began to ooze. Until Kaido, disgusted, pushed her off the sword with her foot, the body tumbled back onto the green blaze. A gift for my favorite sister. As the fire consumed the corpse, a gargantuan portal opened up in the sky. In the next card, when she invades, we see something interesting. Titled Battle Song, it says this at the bottom. A voice as loud as thunder spoke to her, deafening. My home is war. My voice is a battle song. For as long as you have worshipped war, you have worshipped me and I am here to claim my tribute. It is overdue. Zivu arrives with war moons, wrathborn infections, and her army and wipes the place clean. The battle song is important here, and also her claiming that as long as the Cabal have worshipped and took part in war, they have worshipped her. So now she's here to claim what she says is her tribute. Around the time Savathun goes into hiding, Zivu makes her appearance once more, this time with wrathborn infecting the entire solar system. 
These Wrathborn Cryptoliths were very scary. They essentially turned living things into zombies that would fight for Zivu. And like I said, this wasn't just on the moon or the Tangled Shore, it was across the entire system. Zivu was searching for her sister. Sagira patched into local Cabal communications. Keitel's scouts noted unsettling discoveries among the Red Legion stranded in the system. Entire encampments abandoned. Evidence of internal conflict. Mass graves. Whatever is going on with these hive towers, we need an answer. The Black Fleet intends to punish Zavathun for interfering with its efforts to communicate with us. No one knows where the Witch Queen is, not even her own court. And now Zivu Arath is using this opportunity to consolidate her power. In Season of the Lost, the search for Savathun continues and leads to an epic battle in the Dreaming City. Look to the sky, God. Hear the worm gods roar. After millennia of insatiable destruction, they are powerless against my retribution. This is Zivu Arath's last chance to capture Savathun. She's dispatching all local forces to the Spire. More recently, in this season, Season of the Seraph, Zivu is ordered by the Witness to punish Aramis, and also attack the Warmind. So what did she do to her forces? She began corrupting them with Wrathborn infections. Wrathborn made from House Salvation stock. A gruesome fate. Uh, if they nailed to the Witness, this is a logical step. Even a single cryptolith provides Zivu Arath influence enough to worry. Don't wait long. Cryptoliths incite conflict in mind and mechanism alike. Even the sturdiest blades eventually bend to Zivu Arath's will. In the Heist Battlegrounds, you may have seen this line, Zivu's battle hymn surges with your pulse. There is only war. This will happen when you encounter those Death Singer Choristers, I don't know if I said that right, but you have to take them out before they reach the giant totems. If not, all the enemies become overpowered. This war song, as seen in the lore I read to you, gives the enemies in-game an overshield and drains all of your power. No more abilities, no super, and if you had one active, poof, it's gone. It can be frightening when you encounter this in the game, but think about this in the lore and story perspective, meaning that she has these scary powers and we'll see it firsthand when she appears one day. These are just the enemies that are summoning her power, this isn't even her. Osiris fell to Zivu's might back when he lost Sagira. Her visage emboldens. The celebrant weighed to the foot of Zivu Arath's cryptolith, unburnt. Osiris's echoes reconvene into him. Face me, he exclaims and steps forward. Zivu Arath's visage emits a shockwave that thunders through the chasm. It rips away Osiris's well and throws him across the stone floor. His back slams against the cliff face behind him. What is this? Shock punctuates the question. He pulls against an unseen force to no avail. You burn offerings. I accept them. Zivu Arath's will crushes the pressure of his light, seals the flames into his flesh, stakes his body to the stone on paralytic pins. Her image distorts into a concave canvas around him, the celebrant at its core. Shadows encroach, dowsing the borders of his power. So Osiris wanted this fight, and it only fueled Zivu's hate once more, and she poured that into the High Celebrant, which took out Sagira. She appeared and had enormous amounts of power over Osiris. Through inexorable campaign, the absolute mastery of operontological warfare, which is the method of war which converts mere strategy into an attack on the enemy's very fundamental modes of being and knowing, Zivu Arath had claimed great swaths of Oryx's territories. So we see these powers in the Heist Battlegrounds, Zivu draining our power as she becomes stronger. How are we going to fight that? Maybe there'll be ways to limit her battle song and voice and like deal damage to her, but it's scary to think about. Zivu will likely appear before this saga ends. Will it be somewhere in Lightfall or the final shape? We'll have to wait and see. Anyway, Guardians, I hope you enjoyed today's video, a deeper look into the powers and secret magics of Zivu Arath. If you'd like to see some more Destiny lore and mysteries just like this video, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. Anyway, I thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video.